at Courtney Dillon at CourtneyDillon.com. Hi, fun. Lisa. How are you today? Fine. And how's our little prankster, Eric? Um, he was weighing it because we were just talking right before this about, you know, cyber hacking randomly. Oh. He was weighing in on it and he's glad I'm okay. And he, he says your haircut looks good, mom. Oh, thank you, baby. I just got it done. Mm. So Eric, so Courtney was cyber hacked. They went through her firewall. How can we prevent this from happening? Somebody in China. Well, he says you can't. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Okay, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to interview the waterman, Masuro mm -hmm. Imoto. But first, I want to ask if there's any messages from my father-in-law, Oswald Metus, also known he's, as Best he's, he's made his journey. He's crossed over. Okay, good. good. Yeah. He's doing, he looks so, when he shows up, um, he's been in and out the last few days. For yeah, before, too. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, He's still wearing that same suit that everybody saw him in. Oh, not. Okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Any message for your son? Um, business as usual. He's good. He just wants everybody to know he's doing real. He's like, good. And it feels like good. he's going to be, um, was he still involved in politics? I don't know. Oh, if that God. Sounds... Yes. Up to the okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause he feels like he, I don't know if this is going to sound strange, but it feels like he's going to stay involved somehow Good. on the other okay. side. So awesome. He, All right. Thank you. We'll have your service uh, in Norway here pretty soon. So see you then. He, he feels it's going to be a well attended service. Mm, yes, it will. Uh, he's just a very, like, uh, what's the word? He's a very respected, thank you, oh, Eric. Yeah, very much so. He's a very respected um, member of the in the in the country, actually, yeah, not just this country. community. Right. Mm -hmm. And so he it feels like it's a very like like a big big deal kind big, of thing. Big deal. Yeah. Yeah. So. I think um, they called the prime minister or someone high up, and the guy cried. It was just oh. all right. Well, anyway, Masur, Masaru. Emoto, I pronounce your okay, name I'm going to ask um, Eric to bring him in. He's been in and, in and out through my sessions, actually. Yeah. Um, a couple of my sessions uh, in the last couple of weeks. So that's why uh, he came through to, you know, see if we could talk to him today. Okay. Uh, he has a really, um, I always smile because he has a, he has a great smile. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I don't even but, know what he looks like. Well, thank you, Mr. Dr. Emoto, probably for, for letting us interview you. He says, the pleasure is all mine. Thank you for having me today. All right. Well, I've got some questions that we garnered from the community. I'm going to take is. this off every time I channel, I get hot. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. That's okay. A lot of people. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, Dr. Emoto, what was it that led you to your discovery concerning consciousness and water? He says, it was accidental. It was a series of discoveries over time. Um, he, he had been doing, so I don't, so I purposely don't know his history very well. I have read the, his book because he told me to read it. So just okay. so you know, but um, he shows me a um, <clears throat> series of, it shows me a microscope and it, it feels like a series of experiments and there it feels accidental like somehow he comes into this knowledge or accidentally um, comes into this knowledge but he has what he shows me a connection to the consciousness of water which he understands from his perspective now and he has a history um, throughout his journey as a soul of working with the planet interesting this planet and others okay <laughs> but now, yes mostly he's primary accident. you had a glass of water by your nightstand and blah, blah blah i mean can you tell us about the very first accident um uh, there's a student it looks like a male student mm -hmm. he doesn't tell me his name um i'm thinking it's under him or like an apprentice or something like that okay. the student has a question he shows me a question. So the student has a question. 
something about the hypothesis around water. And they begin, this student directs and they begin to conduct an experiment. And then through this experiment, and I think this experiment, because of the student's question, has to do with he had no idea though. I mean, he had an inkling, but not to the degree that he discovered. Right. Um, and then through this student, he was able to, he's showing me the microscope and then um, it's, it's, it's a blaring music. There's blaring okay. music. Oh. And so something with, I think maybe one of the first, and I, it could be wrong. So if I get this wrong, don't get mad at me on the internet, but they probably will. <laughs> but um, through the blaring music, there's that's how the discovery is made. So it feels like they play different or like some type of um, types of music, if that makes sense. Okay. okay. And then that's how the discovery is made. So it feels like music is the original okay. experiment to do with water. Well, and um, and it was it wasn't his idea. It was the student's idea, but it grew into a larger body of work yes. yeah yeah well his life's work okay so. asian healing practices like acupuncture and Tao hold water to have a spiritual nature that can flow yield and sometimes erode what is the connection between your work and this millennium old philosophy of water he smiles he says it is not a philosophy but an understanding that water holds, that water is conscious, that water is alive, that we are able to both direct our thoughts and uh, change or mold the property of water. And we are simultaneously able to, I'm just showing me our own human body, program the very water in our own body. Water itself is conscious and alive. Have you ever asked to communicate with water? Have you ever waited for an answer? Try this. He shows me like a, like a sitting at a kitchen table with a cup. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that we could, you and I and, li and listeners, um, receive messages from the water because it's it's alive it's conscious we just don't know and how to interpret those messages or at least i don't uh he disagrees with this okay you yourself are able to hear see and know many things he, he says about you he thinks <laughs> Begin to trust yourself and your innermost knowing. Allow the message of water to come to you naturally and through your heart. Okay, interesting. It's like using, uh, this, is diff this is interesting, but he's sort of like uh, using our heart field of, in some way to communicate. We can begin to get messages. Okay. Um, well, when I'm in the bathtub, I like to play games with Eric. So if it's a yes, you know, make the water do funny things. It'll ripple or do stuff, even when I'm totally still. So, um, and then also it's apparently, and I feel this true, it's easier to channel in water when you're submerged in water, like taking a bath or taking a shower. Now, um, what does that have to do with your theories, Dr. Emoto? What you are observing is the very power that our thoughts hold. Our thoughts, for example, can change, um, you're showing me clouds, patterns of weather in the sky. Your thought through the focused intention can communicate. So what he's, you're, so you're communicating with Eric, but he's showing me the water will respond to this communication. Okay. It's that powerful. It's it's almost like God. Oh, <laughs> almost. wow. Yeah. All right. Does 
water being almost like a being a consciousness okay come from another planet there's origins of another planet you would agree with that uh The idea of water was this. He showed me like a. Uh, excuse me. He he often shows me like uh, symbols. I, I have to decode, so it's taking me a second. Oh yeah. He yeah. shows me a, a seed, like a you know a seed that we put in the ground. Mm -hmm. The seed of water does look like the idea or origin point um, comes from another. He says dimension. Oh, so, okay. 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 However, the water on your on our planet mm -hmm. is unique to the properties inherent in this planetary structure. There is water in other dimensions, mm -hmm. and it does look like there's water in other um, planets. Mm -hmm. But he would say what what we could know about it is the molecular structure is slightly different. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, after sending good intentions to water prior to drinking it, how long does the high vibration of it last in the body? He would encourage, no, let me start over. I would encourage the person asking this question to notice the language. There is separation in the language. So it's it, it's as if um, that person you, you like, and I get this, he's, he's saying he understands, but you intend and then you like, say you consume the water and then we were wondering how long it lasts. Hmm. What he's saying is it becomes part of us. Yeah. It's absorbed within us. Mm -hmm. It changes um, depending on, I mean, it looks like we can do all kinds of things with water, but depending on what we intend and how we program the very water within our body, uh, we can change our, we can begin to heal. Um, we can have healing and change the cellular structure it also can do um, something to our DNA. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So it's just sort of like he doesn't. It doesn't last, but it's absorbed. It's absorbed okay. within us. All right. Does that? Do you understand what he's? Oh trying yeah, to no, say? I do. I tell. Okay. I mean, okay. Six point something percent water, too. So you know, will there be technology to be able to purify and restore water of toxins and infuse it with minerals in the future? The simple answer to this is yes, yes. But he also wants to um, say, this is, he smiles, that's why I smile. We have technology within ourselves to purify the water. We have technology within ourselves to purify our thought forms. Yeah. And oh. this can begin, this alone can begin to heal the water, even of toxins, although that's kind of unbelievable to us. Mm, interesting. All right. Uh, which place on earth has the purest water? Antarctica, probably. Yes, that's what he is showing me. I He's showing it, me, yeah. Paul. You're right. You read it. You heard him. Um, he was showing me polar bears and, um, yes, Antarctica. Okay. Okay. Which country has a higher frequency of water and why? Some of the, um, some island community communities mm. um, have, uh, he's, what's that? Like Polynesia. Okay. And um, Samoa. I've never yeah. been there. Um, Fiji, these look like good. The water looks good. Um, areas 
with with relatively um, Bali um, is not necessarily talking about the quality of drinking water, but he's right. talking about the it's less disturbed. Oh, okay. Somehow, so the water in the United States does not look good. In his opinion. not. Oh, go ahead. He would uh, he would say the United States has the worst. Oh my God! All right. So and why why the, the, these island places one with a high frequency water? Why is that that they have such a high frequency compared to like the United States water? Um, the process of chlorination. Oh yeah. Yeah. Destroys. Um, it can be it will be restored over time like we can restore it but it, it's a it's difficult to restore the uh, like the ability of this water to absorb uh frequency it, there's it we kind of are like oh i don't understand how to explain this yeah, so I'm sorry if i'm not doing it well no it's perfect i mean if Basically saying that water with, that's chlorinated has a hard time, you know, opening up to different frequencies, waves of energy. Yeah, it, it, there's a just he calls it a distortion. So there's a distortion that happens. Okay. And I think I remember reading this somewhere in his. So he's pointing to his book. So if you want to get his book, it'll talk about this. I think. Okay. But he's talking about there's a distortion that happens mm -hmm. within the molecules and it's unable to absorb the frequencies of as easily, if that makes okay. sense. Okay. Yeah, it does. So, and if he's showing me that, like, a, he, this is what he shows me a map of the United States, all of the water in the United States at the moment looks chlorinated or um yeah I mean, is that tap, accurate tap water i guess because tap water is going to go somewhere down the sewers and into the lakes and rivers and everything so yeah i can imagine what about alkaline something water? happens and mm, okay go ahead. uh hold on he says something show me the year 2026 and it looks like there will begin to be a shift in consciousness in year 2026 about the idea and necessity of taking care of water yeah because if we he's showing me and he wants to remind people of this if humans do not remember to take care of water they are forgetting to take care of themselves yeah so can we take the chlorine out of all the water eventually um Yes, this is what there will be. It will be looked at in the future, but not for quite a while. It will be yeah. observed that this is an elementary um, and not beneficial for the human uh, body. So what do we do about the reason we have chlorine in, in the waters to help prevent infections and stuff like that? So what do we do instead? There will be other purifying systems coming in the future so he shows me a group of humans um they are like the keepers of water and they will they will they will have ideas about how to purify the water in a more uh, aligned way right just like we will return to regenerative farming oh, um good. we will return to um he's showing me like the soil um, so some of the problem with the soil right now, so many things, yeah, it's, it's so depleted right now, um, not everywhere, but particularly in the United States, he's he hasn't, I mean, he's just talking about most people that watch this will be in the United States. Um, although not all <laughs> the, the <clears throat> soil is so depleted. And so that will be restored. But some of the reason the soil is depleted is because the water is not um, activated. Yeah. So there's an energetic component to mm. all of the depletion, even though um, from an, one perspective, 
we can look at the depletion of soil and say it is a result of chemicals or over um, overproduction. Like, uh, like, is that, yeah. is that, thank you, over farming. Right. Yeah. That's what he's trying to say, over farming. From another perspective or his perspective, the depletion is also a result of disrespect and disregard for the consciousness of land and the consciousness of water. Yeah. So once humanity is able to understand that the earth itself is alive and speaks to us yeah. in quiet moments, we will begin to restore harmony, restore peace and harmony to the land and to the water. Wow, that'll be wonderful. So I suppose you're helping these holders of the water, these, these humans. Okay, good, from the other side.